Hello again, Carl. We meet again, Ivan. I challenge you to a game of tetherball. I'm up for it. Hey look! It's a really janky tetherball pole! I'm so glad we could teleport. Tether! Good game! Now, why did the ball get faster at the end? Doesn't this break conservation of energy though? No, Ivan. It's not about energy. It's about the conservation of angular momentum. Momentum is the impetus of an object, or how much motion the object has. Momentum is calculated by mass times velocity, and since tether balls move in circles, it is found by angular mass multiplied by angular velocity. Angular velocity is the radians per second that the object travels. Angular mass is found by the summation of mass times its radius squared. And because all the mass is in one spot in a tether ball, we don't need a summation. Giving us angular momentum is mass times radius squared times angular velocity. To show conservation of angular momentum, we'll hit the ball and measure the radius every time it makes a rotation around the pole. Momentum is always conserved when there is no torque on the moving object. Due to gravity, the rope will not be horizontal. So, we will use the radius as the distance between the ball and the pole. Normally, you would have to calculate the angular mass of the rope, but because it's so light, we can just ignore it. On the left, we have the equation that we explained earlier. On the right, we have mass, the average radius of the first rotation, average radius of the second rotation, and our angular speeds in radians per second. Here we have our calculations and the discrepancy you see with L1 and L2 is due to collisions and friction. Even though the tether ball lost momentum, the velocity went up due to the change in radius. Wow Carl, I really learned a lot when you hit the ball with a baseball bat. I bet the mathematics helped too. It did. Up for another game?